kind of ironic that I'm growing this beard out for No Shave November, and yet a Thor movie comes out at the exact same time. So here's Thor The Dark World, continuing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and in the trend of these Marvel movies getting released overseas before we get it in the United States. Still don't understand why. Thor The Dark World takes place after the events of the Avengers. Loki is brought to trial and is sentenced to life in prison because of what he did to New York. Thor and his friends are busy in the other Nine Realms bringing peace after chaos ensued after the events of Thor, I believe. And everything seems to be going well when suddenly he learns that Jane Foster has discovered this weapon called Aether. This is not good news because it awakens the dark elf Malekith, who many years ago tried to use this weapon to destroy the entire universe. So Malekith is after the Aether and it's up to Thor to stop him. Even if it means taking great risks and teaming up with Loki. Now that's not a spoiler, they show that in the trailer. Out of all the solo films in Marvel's Phase 2, this was the one I was the least excited for. I mean, it looked good. The trailers made it look really good, and especially you got Alan Taylor, one of the directors of Game of Thrones. It's like a perfect match. The reason I was not excited for this one is because just because I was so much more excited for Iron Man 3, Winter Soldier, and Guardians of the Galaxy. And I have to say, I... It, I liked it. It was really good. Unlike my first viewing of Iron Man 3, where I wasn't really sure if I was being truthful or not, or if it was my fanboyisms coming out and just saying it's good, this movie I actually have a definite feeling. As I mentioned, Alan Taylor is one of the many directors for Game of Thrones, and he was an excellent choice for this movie in terms of the look. The costumes, production design for Asgard, and cinematography are all bumped up from the last movie and they look incredible. Even though they do feel very reminiscent of Game of Thrones, they make Asgard much more prominent than it was in Thor. And we get to see the other Nine Realms also, even if some of them are just for brief moments. We spend a lot more time in Asgard and in the other Nine Realms than we do on Earth, which I really like. The action scenes are a lot better in this movie than they were in the original Thor. And one thing I noticed when watching Thor in prep for this movie was that there was a lot of Dutch angle shots in that movie. But if I review Battlefield Earth, I was hoping to save this joke. If you people don't know what a Dutch angle is, it's basically this. This is a Dutch angle, where everything is just flipped on its side, and after a while it can get very annoying. If Thor had a lot of distracting Dutch angles, I am scared of how many Battlefield Earth is going to have. Thankfully, this movie has none of that. The score is really good, and again, it's got some really good performances. No one I can think of was really bad. Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston own their roles as Thor and Loki, respectively. And it's so much fun to watch Tom Hiddleston as Loki. Both of them do command the screen, but when the two of them are on screen, it is awesome to watch. Although I will say, with the reshoots that were reported before this movie came out, there wasn't as much Loki as I was led to believe. Which I'm actually kind of grateful for because I was worried that Loki would be like the Joker in The Dark Knight and basically take over the movie. It becomes Loki's movie. Luckily, he's not in it as much to really do that, but he's in it enough to where you're not disappointed with how much he's in the movie. It's not flawless, though. Um... I'm going to say this right now, it's probably my least favorite movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and here's the problems I had. One thing that I just really wish wasn't in this movie, or in this universe to begin with, was Kat Dennings, Darcy. I mean, as hot as she may be, and I do like her, I just don't see a point to having that character around. She's not a character in the comic to begin with, and her jokes and humor aren't all that funny most of the time. There were a few chuckles here and there, but... If you took her out of the movie, no one was going to miss her. In fact, everyone would just be happier. Speaking of humor, that's more of a mixed bag. I mean, Kat Dennings' humor is obviously not that good to begin with, but a lot of the subtle humor comes from when Thor is back on Earth. 
and just all the stuff that Loki does around Thor, which leads to a great cameo that I'm not going to spoil. But this movie was not as humorous as Iron Man 3, which I really appreciate for, because uh, hey, I might like Iron Man 3 more, but I'll admit the humor in that movie was... it went a little overboard. Another issue I had with this movie, and I think is the main flaw of the movie, Malekith. Malekith is played by Christopher Eccleston, who is one of the many Doctor Whos. And without hesitation, I can easily say he is the single weakest villain in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, I've heard people complain about Whiplash and Aldrich Killian being too underdeveloped, but at least their like motivations for their actions made a little sense. Malekith seemed a bit too generic. His motivation for destroying the world just didn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, I don't think they even mentioned a motivation. And overall, he just wasn't that interesting of a villain, which is really a shame. He was very, very underdeveloped. The basic way I could describe this in, like, movie terms, it's, imagine if Loki was Toy Story 3, and then Malekith is Cars 2. Big step down. If there's one thing I do like about Malekith, I mean, he is powerful, don't get me wrong, I mean, he proves more of a match for Thor, but still not that interesting of a villain. Although, one thing I do like about him is his redesign. In the comics, Malekith just seemed a little too bright and colorful to be a dark elf. In here, his redesign actually kind of works, and basically fits what he is, a dark elf. Although, he is damn powerful, more than a match for Thor, but he's still really underdeveloped, and he is no Loki. Hopefully in the next movie they'll bring a more interesting villain and possibly Enchantress? Are you listening, Marvel? Although I did have a lot of fun with this movie. I, Despite me bringing up all the things that this movie did right over the original Thor, I still like the original Thor better. This again is currently my least favorite movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but I don't think it's bad. I still had a lot of fun. It's exciting. That cameo is really good. It made the entire audience laugh. It had a good mid credit scene, I thought. And, yeah, I think I'm going to go see it again. So I'm going to say that it's worth seeing in your lifetime. It's got some great action scenes. Characters like Frigga and Heimdall are brought up more and get to do some good things. It has a really powerful scene, emotionally. But Cat Dennings is not funny, and Malekith was just too underdeveloped. So that's my review for Thor The Dark World. Leave a comment if you've seen the movie. Subscribe to my channel for more reviews in the future. Check out my other channel, AlexG462. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at AlexG462. Like me on Facebook, slash The Cinemas of Mr. Robinson. Tell your friends about me. This has been The Cinemas of Mr. Robinson, telling you to know it before you see it. I'll see you guys later. And don't worry, Malekith is real.